Architects Rocks. I'm Joe Tu. We are here at the beautiful Music City, Texas Theater in Linden, Texas. Today we have White Trash Wannabes, a badass little three-piece East Texas band. Sounds like Leonard Skinner and Buck Cherry combined. You're going to love them. Hang out right here. Be right back. I'm Joe Tu, our assistant producer, Teresa Sullivan. We're at Goldfish Productions. This is where the magic happens. Uh, since you've seen our first show, you kind of know what we're about. We're about original artists of the Arquitex. Tell us how we can get involved. Okay, if you're an original artist in the Arquitex area, which is Arkansas, Louisiana, or Texas, you can hit us up on Facebook. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for being with us. We're here with White Trash Wannabes, a uh, little group, three-piece band from East Texas. How y'all doing? Doing good, Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Since y'all are White Trash Wannabes, one of the questions that, that came to my mind was, what's the trashiest thing you've ever done? What do you mean, like women? <laughs> what's, the, what's, the what's the trashiest thing you've ever done? Oh, God. So many things to pick from, man. Just white trash. It's a, it's, it's kind of a lifestyle. Pretty much whatever we do is. It's, it's <laughs> You're living the dream. Living the dream. No man. life like low life. Yeah, exactly. We're we're a bunch of low lives. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're all good. <laughs> we're very classy. We're. Uh, um, I don't think anything that I do is trashy, just because. Uh, our name has trash in it. <laughs> uh, That's trashy. Right. 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 It's trashy enough. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of things that I've probably done that was trashy, I probably wouldn't want to say because it might, you know, put a blemish on my name. So you're, uh, you're pleading the Fifth Amendment, right? right. There you go. Well, I already know it don't look so bad though. It's kind of like yeah, I mean, best people know what bad. they know. Well, <laughs> yeah, people know a lot of things, but yeah, I know it. Unfortunately, <laughs> if it's the thing I don't know, you shouldn't say. <laughs> All right, now get to your question. What's the tra who's the trashiest woman you've ever done? Uh, First names only. Or you can make up a code name. I can make up a code name. Yeah, you can make up a code name. <laughs> you can make up a code name. Yeah. yeah. I got a good one. <laughs> my, my, my first wife. How about that one? That's a great one. E. I'm going to get you over that one. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> if you would have said my first wife, I would have been impressed. Yeah, we, 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 we might have to play the fifth one. <laughs> I had the perfect answer. Yeah. I'm probably gonna catch hell on that one. Yeah, you, you probably listen. <laughs> next time, yeah. right? next time you see her, she's just gonna punch you in the face. That's gonna be awesome. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the trashiest girl ever would have to be the Sunday school teacher's niece. Yeah, Sunday school teacher's niece. For you. The Sunday school teacher's niece. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. <laughs> right. That's the trash. That's Sweet. Weird. Was it in church though? No, it was in the preacher's house. Oh, that's, yeah, that's just almost as good. <laughs> that's exclamation point. That is. <laughs> You would have done it in the rectory or something like that. I would have done it wherever I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was 13 at the time. It was yeah. anywhere it was. I was oh, I got you. I was bad. I had to drop him off. I thought he was trying to be good and go to church and, and hear all these stories after the fact. Yeah. I'm proud of him, though. You know? <laughs> Good stuff you do it in church. I love it. Give right, right back to religion and politics. All right. Tell us about the song. Uh, yeah, the songs tell me. It's on iTunes. Uh, Wrote the song in Sturgis, South Dakota, at a biker rally. Just up there. Not a biker rally. At the the biker, biker rally. rally. Yeah, you're right. Uh, up there, having a good time. Uh, more or less on a seven-day drunk, and wrote the song. Man, it's uh, it's about getting drunk, having a good time, pretty much. You know. Well, you're and telling us about telling about what I am. So it was uh, probably '06, I guess. '07, somewhere around in that area. Did you go every year? I did there for a couple of years. And, you know, we stay so busy now, I don't get to go up and do the bike rally. Because it takes two weeks to go do that deal. So. Been there myself. All about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank y'all guys for being here. Y'all check out White Trash Wannabes. Tell me. See you.
whiskey at the Oklahoma line. I've been snorting me some cocaine and I've been chasing them with wine. But people thought of time ask me why we play so loud. Tell them I'm just trying to make my great daddy proud. something new on Arklatex Rocks. It's called Arklatex Legends. Our legend, Jerry Beach. World-renowned guitarist, blues enthusiast, family man, grandfather, all-around great guy. Jerry Beach is hosting the Monday Night Blues Jam. Y'all come on in with That's right. That's Jerry Beach, our Arklatex legend. Welcome to this segment of Arklatex Legends. I got Jerry Beach. It's Jerry Beach, it's a pleasure. Uh, as always, good to see you. Appreciate it. Tell me, when did you fall in love with music? Oh, Lord. I guess when I was a baby, my mother always had a radio playing, and I fell in love with guitars real early and started fooling around with a guitar. I, my grandfather bought me a guitar at a pawn shop for three dollars, and I had no way to idea of tuning it or nothing else, but I plunked on it for two or three years, and that's probably five years old then. And from there, I just never quit playing with it. And, basically taught myself there wasn't much to well guitar teachers when I started playing. You kind of had to learn it on your own from somebody. And uh, I've just been doing it a long time now. I didn't get it. And, uh, and I'm still enjoying it. Yeah. That's that's what's important really. Oh yeah. <laughs> have you yeah. played have you played music with your grandkids yet? 
Uh, my 11-year-old started learning to play a little bit, but he found out he had to practice, and he's on sabbatical right now. <laughs> and, uh, but my littlest one, the two-year-old, loves the guitar. He gets his dad's guitar and puts it in his lap. His strums on it, got one hand on the net, and he'll just do that and do that and do that. So I have hopes for him. <laughs> good, good. Uh, what defines a blues man to you? Wow, well, there's a lot of things. Um, the main thing is, and, and, and I teach, I teach guitar, it's something I teach my students all the time. It's not how many notes you play. It, there's no such thing as who's the fastest guitar player in the world. They never had that contest. So it's not about how many notes, it's what notes you play and what kind of feeling you put into those notes. And that's what defines the blues. Uh, anybody can play the notes for blues. I hear people do that all the time, but they're not really playing the blues. They're not, they're not feeling and doing, those notes are not coming from here. They're just coming from out of seeing somebody else do it or something. And I think that's basically what it is to me. Yeah. What? How long have you been involved with the Blues Jam? I started the Monday Night Blues Jam in 1988 at Enoch's. Enoch's and Centenary, yeah. And we went over there there till they closed and then it moved from, I think, probably five or six different locations. But there was always a Monday Night Blues Jam. Uh, different ones that played at Joe Lado, Danny Wilder. Well, Ted Lindsay's probably played it longer than anybody. Uh, Ted is off tonight, he's sick, but he's been playing the Blues Jam for, God, at least 15, 16, 17 years. And uh, so we have a, a, a running camaraderie among people who played the Blues Jam. A whole bunch of you. Uh, and, uh, but it's still going on, so it's in his place, and it's in his 23rd year. It's quite a while. Yeah. It's, well, it's just an institution. Yeah, it is. You know, everybody knows on Monday night you can go hear the blues. That's right. And no telling who you may hear play. That's right. I, I, I know that there have been some big names oh, yeah. over the years, you know, come through. Uh, tell me about some of the songs that you've written. And maybe where I can find them. Well, the, the main thing, I, I guess, would be my main claim to fame, or certainly would be, would be a song called I'll Play the Blues for You, uh, as recorded initially by Albert King. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't write it for Albert King, I wrote it for another guy, and we had a demo on it, and then he disappeared off the face of the earth. And Albert King heard the song and recorded it and had a hit with it. And it became his signature song. So it was written all down the side of his bus. You know, I'll play uh, Albert King, I'll play the blues for you. And it's been recorded, I know, by 14 different artists. Really? Wow. So it's been good to me. It's awesome. It has. What music inspired you growing up? What music inspired me? Uh, country. Uh, when I was growing up, there wasn't any such thing as rock and roll. There was a big band, and I liked it. But I liked country because it had guitar in it. And then I started playing. playing. Well, I started playing right at the beginning of rock and roll. I was one of the heathens to the other musicians. You know, we played in E. And we played da 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 and they thought we were terrible. And we were <laughs> compared to them. Okay. <laughs> and that's kind of the way I look at it today. I look at a young crop of people today, and they are heathens. <laughs> and I know exactly where they're coming from. They're busting new boundaries. <laughs> yes, they and are. That's what we were doing. Yeah. I think we did it pretty good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you're still doing it pretty good. I'm Jerry. still enjoying it. Well, that's good. Jerry, thank you very much for well, I appreciate being the opportunity, our architect, guys. Thank you. Jerry Beach, Compton, Monday Night Blues Jam at Lee's every Monday night. Come see us. That's right. Okay, guys. We're going to do outplay the blues for you, Paul.
for you.